Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing something different. It is my very first food video, and I'm taking you guys through what I eat throughout a day. Now, this is a typical healthy day. This is not a cheat day. I'm not going out to eat. Everything is made at home, and it's relatively healthy. It's really healthy. Sherm helped me figure out what I needed to be eating in a day in order to maintain my weight. And so I'm working beyond that because I am consistently working out, but I'm trying to eat in a deficit. With that being said, I am not a dietitian. I am not certified in any way, shape or form to tell anybody what they should be eating. This is just what's working for me currently. So we'll start with breakfast. Well, good morning, little boy. You wanna help me make breakfast? You wanna help me make breakfast? He's just staring at it. Look at him. <laughs> so what is this contraption, Mom? And this is how we start every day with the snuggles. Squeeze him, we squeeze him, and let him know how much I love him. He's into it. He's just staring at it. <laughs> All right, first things first, cold brew in the morning after some water. I'm making an egg scramble. I have two egg whites in the bowl already. Now I'm gonna crack two whole eggs. And I will throw them away. I just sat them in the container. All right, so spray the pans. I have two out because I'm doing some veggies in one and the eggs in the big one. Here are some cherry tomatoes. I already washed them, so I throw a couple in there about six and I have that pan on high heat then toss in some garlic and wait for it to start to brown whisk the eggs up this will help them make it make it a little fluffy but also I want to break the yolks toss it in the pan and wait for it to get hot that is on medium heat spraying again and I'm using coconut oil today All right, now for my favorite part, the dairy-free cheese. I'm obsessed with Parmella Creamery. This is their cashew nut cheese. So good, it's cheddar flavor, it melts, you must try. So I take one piece, break it up into smaller pieces and put it around the entire omelet. I'm gonna be rolling this in a crepe style, so I want it to be in every single bite. Give the tomatoes a little toss around and those are smelling good, so they're almost done. Turn the heat off actually and now we wait. All right, so those are perfect. They're a little bit black on places. The juices got warm. I love these like that. Um, I will put a little sprinkle of salt on it at the very end. All right, now cheese is melted. Let's add some bacon bits. This is about a tablespoon of real bacon bits. And now we're going to roll the omelet. Do it out of the pan a little, that's fine. Turn the heat off and grab a plate and now we're ready for breakfast. Grab that cold brew. Grab that cold brew. <laughs> Finally grabbed it. All right, so let's get started with lunch. I had to go get a knife because I forgot it. So first things first, we're gonna do some spinach. I like to do two handfuls. This is organic spinach from Trader Joe's. Plop that on the plate. Then I grabbed a handful of the cherry tomatoes. I'm gonna cut these in half. There is about six of these. So I'm trying to keep my serving sizes appropriate. Slice those, put it on there. I'm also a huge fan of color, if you can tell. So I like for things to look pretty. So I'm going to make my plate pretty. All right, next up we have a cucumber. I love the English cucumbers. I think I intended for this to be a seedless cucumber, but whatever. Gotta peel the plastic off. That piece I'm saving for Cheesy because they're his favorite. And 
and need to give it a little rinse. I'll show you guys the wash, the fruit and vegetable wash that I use. It's also from Trader Joe's. I like to use this to get my vegetables and fruit really clean. All right, so then I'm gonna slice this up. Oh, there comes Cheesy, he wants some. He's so obsessed with cucumbers and we always give them to him, but I have to wait until he goes away because you cannot give him a treat when he's begging. And I don't always make my food pretty, but I feel like it's more enjoyable to me to eat if it does look good. Add a little more, add a little more. I could literally eat an entire cucumber just biting it off in chunks because that's how much I love a cucumber. And pickles. Pickles, what's up? Oh, I had to try it. All right, here is some chicken that I have. So this is just, the whole container is nine ounces of shredded chicken. I'm not going to use it all right now, but we made this yesterday in a crock pot. Threw some frozen chicken breasts with some better than bouillon seasoning and water. And we basically cooked that for four hours and then shred it and we portion it out so then we can have an easy meal and we're less tempted to eat garbage. So for me, I'm gonna do a salad. So this is about five and a half ounces that I put on top of my salad. I'll 100% go back and eat the rest later. And cheese is still waiting on a cucumber. The dressing. Carrot ginger miso salad dressing from Trader Joe's. Again, banging. It's a cold pressed and I could just eat this exactly by itself. If you've ever been to a Japanese steakhouse, this is the kind of dressing that they put on. Oh, yum. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I'm going to need to add some more salad dressing though. Just a little bit. And because queso is such a good boy. Sit. Stay. No, no, stay. 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 Oh, good boy. Okay, the rest in here. That's a good boy. You ate it all in one fatal swoop. I just finished my workout. I'm pretty grimy and I already have this set up so I'm not moving the ring light. All right, now let's get this protein shake started. I start off with a plant-based protein powder. This has 20 grams of protein in it and it's mainly pea protein. It's got some quinoa too and I have some ice cubes in the very bottom. Two scoops. Then the next thing I'm gonna add is some PB2. This is basically powdered peanut butter. The serving size is two tablespoons, so the little scooper that I have in there, that's what it is, it's just two tablespoons in a scoop already. And it's half the calories, half the fat, but also half the protein, so it's only nine extra grams of protein. Next, so this is my Vital Proteins. I have this in some way every single morning. During the winter, it's always in my coffee, but right now I'm over hot coffee, so I've been throwing it into my shake. I put two scoops in. It gives me 18 grams of protein and also 20 grams of collagen, which I love. It helps my hair, my skin, my nails, and it also helps your joints. Then I like to add a little bit of cinnamon. Doesn't matter how much. Cinnamon helps to stabilize your blood sugar, so it's always in the smoothie in the morning. All right, so here's the almond breeze. I like the unflavored vanilla almond milk. I usually add eight ounces. I think I went a little short on this today, but I didn't measure it out trying to be fancy, and you'll see later on it. I needed more. All right, so we pop the top on. This is the Ninja Mixer. Love this thing. Turn it on and smoothie it up. And now I have to wait. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> I was trying to rush the process. It was not done. 
As we sit here and wait for my smoothie to actually be finished, I grab a glass. These are some cool silicone straws that I got in um, a FabFitFun box. It comes with a little traveling case too, and I like that. And you can just wad that sucker up and put it in. All right, now let's actually stop the blender and see if it's done. I used to use metal straws all the time and then I became paranoid because people were falling on them and like having them stick through their head. So silicone's the way to go for me. All right, so this looks like it's pretty much done. I'm gonna pour it in my cute little glass. And this is my post shake workout. So this comes in in about 48 grams of protein and I'm trying to count in my head, maybe 300 calories. My workout today was cardio and weightlifting, so I need something pretty substantial afterwards. Burned about 500 calories. Now it's spaghetti squash time. So we're cutting the spaghetti squash in half, and you gotta get all the guts out. Sometimes I put it in the microwave after I poke little holes in it for like two minutes, and it's so much easier to cut. But scrape all the guts out. Then you're gonna need a pan. So grab your pan, spray it with a little oil so it doesn't stick, and stick your two boats in there. Then take some olive oil, drizzle on top, and you're gonna wanna massage it in there a little bit to make sure you get it in the nooks and crannies, but you don't wanna overuse the olive oil. Then add a little salt and pepper. I like the pink Himalayan salt and some pepper on there too. Not too much, just a pinch. You wanna have your oven set to 425 because now you're going to bake the two spaghetti squash boats at 425 for 20 minutes. Next, we're gonna start the meat. We're using really lean turkey breast, ground turkey breast today. I'm throwing a little bit of chopped up garlic from a jar into the pan first. Then I have two pounds of turkey. We are not going to be using it for two servings today, but I'm just gonna go ahead and cook it up and get it seasoned because it's easier and we like to meal prep. Then you wanna add your spices, some onion powder. I just kinda like guesstimate it, just shake it in there. Then I have some garlic powder. I love the Italian herb mix, so I dump a lot of that in there and then a tiny bit of salt. We're going to be using salt throughout this, so you don't ever wanna over salt anything. You can always add salt, but you cannot take salt away. All right, so that's been cooking for a little bit. It's almost done. I'm just chopping it up and turning it over and over. I also added some crushed red pepper when the camera was not rolling. In the second pan, we're gonna do some vegetables, so give it a light spray with olive oil. Then I have some sliced mushrooms that are ready to go, dumping those in there and making sure that I break the bigger pieces in two. Throw a little bit more garlic. I mean, I love garlic, kind of obsessed, it's a problem. One of the most important things I learned about mushrooms is you do not salt them. That will basically make all the moisture come out. So I added a lid on top of them and that is going to help them sweat a little bit but not get rid of all of the moisture. Now we're gonna add some baby spinach, two big old handfuls, throw it in there. And as y'all can see, I'm drinking sparkling water. During the week, part of my healthiness is I'm not drinking during the week. I didn't realize how many calories I was consuming and I was basically gaining weight because I was drinking my calories and some. So throw that spinach in there, toss it around, and looks like the meat is done and I pulled the spaghetti squash boats out too. So now that's wilted, give it a little stir. And we are almost ready to load these up. It's kind of sticking, but that's fine. Gives it a little character. All right, so turn that off. And now we are going to put everything in the boats. I started with the vegetables first. You can start however you want. There's no rhyme or reason to this, just fill the boats up. 
I wanted to make sure I got extra mushrooms or extra vegetables in here because I've already hit my protein goal for the day. All right, so now it's time for the sauce. Oh, I tried to go for the meat, but it's pause. Sauce. <laughs> and that's just plain marinara sauce from Trader Joe's. So I have a little teaspoon. I'm not measuring this specifically, but I think I used about a half a cup per boat. Smear that in. Now we're ready for the meat. So that scoop that I'm using is supposed to be a half a cup as well, or maybe it's a cup. My measurements are a little bit off on this, so I'm not exactly sure how much meat I ended up using, but just cover it up. Make sure it's all in there. <laughs> and then I went in with a little bit more sauce, smearing it on the top. Probably shouldn't have touched the meat, but that's fine, it's cooked. And doing it to both. Now this is the part where everybody else would add a lot more cheese probably, but I'm doing a sprinkle of Parmesan cheese. I feel like a layer of mozzarella would be extremely delicious on this. And then I'm also hitting it with some nutritional yeast. For those who don't know what nutritional yeast is, it's Basically, it's used by vegans. It's a seasoning that adds a little bit of a cheddar nutty flavor to stuff. It also helps thicken it up, but this is kind of like my Parmesan cheese. I normally do not eat dairy, and I know I put a little bit on top of this. I probably will be sad about that later. And then I gotta get my Italian seasoning back out here. I don't know where I went. There I am. Italian seasoning, a little sprinkle on the top, and then this guy's going back into the oven for at least five minutes. If you add more cheese, just watch it. You want the cheese to melt and to brown. So popping that back in there, and I'm gonna set a timer for five minutes. Lovely little countdown, and look, they are out. So when you cook the spaghetti squash for only 20 minutes at 425 to begin with, it's not going to become mushy. And that's one of the things that we absolutely love. It's more the consistency of spaghetti. Look at that. Mmm. Yum. Which pair are we saying? It's your turn. We're going to do God our Father. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll say real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that you've blessed us with, dear Lord. Thank you for this food, and thank you for the hands that prepared it. Thank you for keeping us safe, and please continue to keep us safe. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Take a bite. I bet it's hot. Oh, it's steaming. Good. Are you just saying that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.